What's going on everybody? My name's Ed and today we have a special guest. Come on guys. Here to help us wire the AMV2 ECU. Before we jump into that, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. It'll help us out a lot and uh, yeah, let's get started. Talk to us, what are we doing right now? What are you doing exactly? I am taking apart the factory harness, wire and relay harness, it goes to the Dizzy and the throttle bike. And it used to go to the master flow meter right here. I don't know, master flow meter. But what we're gonna do is we're using the AEM V2 plug and play ECU for this car. And to try to make it look like we actually tried or like we know what we're doing, we're gonna reuse a lot of the factory harness and repin it at the ECU instead of rerunning new wires. So in order to accomplish that and to get a nice clean look, I need to take apart the harness, part of the harness we don't need and we pin that. Okay. And so the connector that we're looking at right now is the math, right? Yes. And the reason why we're looking at this is we're gonna use two of these pins that are on here. Well, three of these pins that are on here. We've identified one as the one we're using for map, one that we're using for the air temperature sensor. And then there's another one on here that we are gonna use for the map. What is it, the five volt sensor? Five volt reference. Five volt re reference. Or five volt reference or five volt power, yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll be a little bit more specific as we go along here, but uh, right now, everything's just all over the place. If you guys have been keeping up with the build, this is a SE300, it's a 95 going NAT, and this is one of the last things that needs to be done before we can get it started and throw it on the dyno and make some power, little power, or whatever power we can make. But uh, yeah. All of it. All, all the horsepower. All 300 of it? No, man, we're gonna make more than that. <laughs> all 400. That way you can watch your transmission blow up on the dyno. Poor W58. It's okay, you'll just get a T56. Anyways, I'm gonna set this camera down and help him out a little bit, clean, clean this harness up a little bit. Scratch my nose. There you go. And uh, when we make a little bit of progress, I'll jump back on and we'll talk about what the next steps are. I'm sorry, math is 66B. So that's this one, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66. Go put it in the middle, that's the one we need. Okay, so take that one out. We don't want this for math, we it's want for... Math is for math, but you said air temperature. Doesn't matter, well, if you got that one, we'll do that one. No, 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 air temperature is, we gotta pull that pin out, so go to 45A again. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. That's the one we're using for air temp. This one? Yeah, it's not because, the middle one. Because that's 45A and that's already in the ECU. Okay. This one is. But yeah, but that's not in the middle. Don't worry about the middle one. Okay. The middle one is the one we're using for map. I had it backwards. Okay, don't move. See you there. Okay. See you there. All right, so quick status update. Right now, all you have done is gone through the harness and labeled everything. Let me show you what we labeled so far. This is the MAF connector and using a multimeter, I went through on the ECU side while he went through on the connector side and we were just kind of figuring out what pins we can reuse from here. And it looks like we're gonna move some pins around. So we got, I believe that middle one, It'll focus. All right, it's not gonna focus. I'll explain this all at a later time. But for right now, what are we doing over here? I am, I am getting the sensor ground out of the- Diagnostic port? Diagnostic port, yes. So that sensor ground is 28B on the, uh, the pin for it on the, uh, on the main harness and we're just gonna run all of the grounds for map, uh, temp sensor, and pretty much everything, right? Boost solenoid, everything's gonna go there. Everything's going there. So uh, we haven't ran any wires yet, but we are uh, looking pretty good right now. So I'll jump back on in a few and we'll do a little status update and go from there. 
All right, so everything's pretty much wired in and let me show you guys what we did. All right, so let's start with the map sensor. I have the map sensor running, the wires running underneath the uh, intake manifold. I'm gonna clean all of that up, that spider web mess over there. But uh, I have it mounted over here. And this is a bracket that I picked up from Vanzai Racing. So I thought this was a cool little location to just keep it. And yeah, that looks good. Over on the other side, so we have the air temperature sensor. We have the boost solenoid right there. I don't have any vacuum lines or anything connected to it yet. Then I have the wideband over here. I'm gonna explain the pinout situation here in a second, but for right now, it's time to test everything and I guess do a first start. So this is pretty exciting. I'm gonna record my reaction. It's the very first start or very first attempt to try to start this thing and see how it goes. All right, well, let's go for it. Runs like crap. All right, so it's been a couple of weeks. After that first startup, I was not able to get it to start again because of fueling issues. And after playing around with it unsuccessfully for a while, I reached out to uh, Freed Engineering and Ben was uh, able to get it starting, get it started, and now it runs a lot better and a lot smoother. So um, yeah, that's good. Still needs a tune, which is gonna be the next thing that we do here. But um, I wanted to wait for this moment because I wanted to double check and make sure that all my wiring that I've done for the AM V2 was working correctly. And I'm happy to announce that it is working correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and share with you guys how I did it. And if you guys like this approach, you can take what you like from this video and try it yourself. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is in the description, you're gonna see a link. And when you click on that link, it's gonna take you to the installation instructions from AEM Performance. And um, make sure you guys print this, study it, because you're gonna have all of the uh, pinouts and the diagrams of what everything is as far as the sensors and that sort of stuff. So now, what I'm gonna to talk to you guys about first is the map sensor, how I installed that. I have my map located behind my intake manifold back here. And what I did is I took the map. Okay, you have five wires going into your map sensor. I took three of those wires out and I reused them, okay? So what I did exactly, I took notes here, is I basically took 41B, which is your five volt re reference in the map. And on the harness side, I moved that to 11B which is five volt power on the uh, AMV2 uh, standalone. 66B on your map, I moved that to 62B for map signal. And then 28B ground, we're gonna talk about ground here last because a couple of sensors use the same ground. So I'm gonna share with you guys what I did there. Um, but moving along, the air temperature sensor, I have that here right on my uh, intercooler pipe. And that is on 45B for your air temp. So what I did is 45B is on your MAF connector. I basically set that wire aside. I didn't have to unpull the pin or anything on the uh, harness side. I just left it where it is. And I moved that wire all the way to where it is here. And that's the wire that's giving, uh, that's the air temperature wire on the connector. Wideband is on 47B, O2 number one. I just pulled the pin out on the harness side and then I ran whatever wire came with the wideband into 47B. And then boost solenoid. That's supposed to be on 60B PW2 on the harness side. So what I did is for my 022, number two, we're not using that wire. I took that wire out and I moved it from 48B into 60B on the harness side. And then the last thing is fuel pump. So when I did the fuel pump installation, I didn't know which 
pin I was gonna plug the fuel pump into at the time. And the pin that I actually ended up using was 72B, which is labeled here as LS2. And everything is working perfectly fine. Now, as far as ground, 28B, okay? 28B is gonna be on your diagno diagnosis port. So what I did is I just ran all of my sensors to 28B on the diagnosis port and everything's working there perfectly fine. Now I know this is not the best explanation on how to do all of this, okay? But trust me when I tell you, when you print this diagram out, you're gonna wanna study it. And this is one of those things that makes a lot more sense as you start diving into it and you figure out where everything goes. Then you just end up, you know, running the wires where they need to be, pinning everything where it's supposed to go, and it's, it's, a, it's really, it's a lot easier than it sounds. I know it sounds terrible, but the wiring is actually not that bad. Um, now, what I wanna do right now is, I wanna, I wanna give you guys a quick cold start here. I can't really drive this thing like that because it's on a base map and it really needs a tune. It does idle really, really well, uh, but um, I can't really do a lot of driving until I get it tuned. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump right into this cold start and then uh, we'll go from there. So the only thing left for me to do is to install my catch can. And a couple videos ago when I painted these valve covers, I tapped and I drilled some dash 10 fittings into the top of the valve cover. And as you can see, I have some 90, uh, 90 degree fittings on top of both of them. I was test fitting some stuff out. But anyways, I just need to run some lines to a catch can that's gonna go here. Now I'm gonna do that on the next video here. But um, if you guys like what you saw or have any questions about anything that I covered, just let me know in the comment section. And of course, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.